Colin Fokerson, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about our dreams on Mars. But I guess more specifically, we're talking about how do we actually produce fuel on Mars, especially if we decided to make a colony somewhere on this beautiful planet. With the main topic coming from this recent paper that essentially discusses a pretty interesting and somewhat brilliant design, with relatively simple components and relatively simple ideas, where an entire facility using cyanobacteria could actually produce enough fuel for various future rockets to then use that fuel to take off from Mars and to basically go back to Earth. Because as you probably know from a lot of previous videos and a lot of previous studies, well, at the moment, all of the potential crewed missions to Mars are unfortunately one way. There is almost no way for us to bring enough fuel for a return trip. And so there has to be a way for us to somehow make fuel directly on Mars by using what's already on site. And that's of course one of the biggest engineering challenges when it comes to future Mars colonies. But this particular suggestion actually proposes something that's quite possible using some of the resources on Mars, and in theory can definitely assist us in the colonization of this beautiful red planet, while also producing some other essential ingredients as well. So let's talk a little bit more about this, but let's also quickly go through some of the previous studies that have made, I guess, somewhat similar suggestions. So in general, the idea of using bacteria for various types of production on Mars is definitely not new. As a matter of fact, one of the biggest major suggestions that you can read more about in one of the articles in the description or by watching one of the previous videos was to basically build an entire Martian colony by using Martian regolith and by combining this with certain chemical elements created by various bacteria inside a bioreactor designed by the scientists. And this could then be used to produce a lot of different structures on the surface. Bacteria have also been suggested as a way for us to synthesize air, as a way for us to synthesize food, and as a way for us to basically create a lot of living conditions on the surface of Mars. But in many such cases, unfortunately a lot of these ideas have been so far quite rudimentary and would still require really large facilities for all of this to function. And also obviously when it comes to rockets, I guess the bigger question here is, well if you bring a rocket to Mars, how is it ever going to get back? It still needs fuel. And although the original plans uh, called for, I guess, shipping all of this fuel to Mars with certain other rockets, in this case it would require a tremendous amount of fuel and a tremendous amount of extra weight. Which at the moment means that any trip involving humans would very likely be one way. But obviously a lot of modern rockets are designed with the main premise of being able to take off from planet Earth. So here we have a very specific fuel in mind, a fuel that has to be very efficient chemically, and a fuel that has to produce just enough boost for the rocket to take off. Mars, however, has a slightly different situation. Here, first of all, we have a lot less gravity. Second of all, there is practically no atmospheric pressure. And so the scientists in this paper decided to analyze certain other chemicals that could be used as a potential fuel for Martian rockets. And they came up with a few possible ideas, with this one here known as 2,3-butanediol being a surprisingly good candidate for certain conditions, for several reasons. First of all, it's actually surprisingly easy to create this. For example, here on Earth, it's often used as a precursor for different types of pesticides, also for different types of plastics, and to manufacture various types of rubber products. But the thing is, if you were to burn this material along with oxygen, it would actually sort of act as a typical fuel, just not as powerful and not as efficient. But efficient enough to use on Mars. As a matter of fact, it could definitely replace things like methane, things like hydrogen and oxygen, and could be definitely used as a propellant for future Martian rockets. And more importantly, it can directly be synthesized by certain types of bacteria in certain conditions. And so here's a general design for how all of this would work in theory. You essentially have the cyanobacteria cultivation area, which is actually relatively large in area, but would not really require that much material to produce, that would use the concentration of CO2 that's already present in the Martian atmosphere, along with any water that could be extracted from within Mars itself. And then, along with sunlight, this would allow cyanobacteria to grow and create the large amounts of biomass that could then be reprocessed. And so all of the cyanobacteria that's obviously going to be also producing oxygen is now going to be used to break it down and to turn it into complex sugars by using various types of enzymes. 
And then all of this will be fed to another bacteria, specifically a certain type of E. coli bacteria. And here we're talking about genetically engineered E. coli bacteria to then produce all of this 2,3-BDO required for fuel. With all of this also creating oxygen as a byproduct, and that's of course from the photosynthesis process, which is also used both for fuel and of course for breathing or for a lot of other activities on the colony. And so in theory this single bioreactor, with just a few steps and possibly just a little bit of time, can produce relatively high impurity fuel and also the oxidizer needed for rockets to then take off from Mars. And some of the preliminary calculations also suggest that all of this would not really be that massive and would be deliverable in just a few steps. With all of this requiring roughly around 20 tons of material, and all of this could definitely be delivered to Mars in just a few rocket launches. But I guess one of the questions here is that, well, why is it that this is the first time we're hearing about this particular design? And one of the possible answers is because nobody has ever thought about using this particular material as a fuel here on Earth. Like I mentioned, it's used in rubber production. It's not really used as a rocket fuel, mostly because it's just not efficient enough for Earth. It is efficient enough for other planets. Which also implies that there could be a lot of other potential fuels that could be used on Mars that are just not very useful here on Earth. But that's something that's already kind of explored in this paper, although I'm sure other papers might discover something else that hasn't been found here yet. The other candidates are listed here as well. And interestingly enough, this process and this design would also produce approximately 40 tons of extra materials that could then be used to support the colony itself. Specifically, extra oxygen, and that's of course very needed for future colonists. But there's actually one reason the scientists are not entirely certain if this is going to work just yet. By design, all of this requires that the bacteria and pretty much this whole area is actually exposed to the Martian surface, and more specifically Martian radiation, and of course Martian atmosphere. At the moment, it's not entirely certain if algae and cyanobacteria can actually survive in these particular conditions if they're going to be exposed to harsh Martian conditions for months and even years at a time. And building some sort of a dome or protection for this type of a reactor at the moment would just require way too much material and would be way too expensive to achieve. And so in essence, here the design calls for complete exposure to Martian atmosphere. And because we haven't really tested any of the bacteria or cyanobacteria or of course E. coli by exposing them to these harsh conditions, nobody currently knows if any of this would work just yet. And so the next step for this particular team and their study is to try to simulate this here on Earth by using some sort of a simulated condition in some sort of a chamber and then see if the E. coli and the cyanobacteria can survive without a protection from the dome by being exposed to these harsh radiation conditions and low pressure. But that's of course a study that hasn't come out yet, so we don't really know if this is truly going to work. Either way though, it's a really interesting proposition and it definitely might be used in the future if we do end up building some sort of a colony on the red planet. Until future studies, or until we discover something else, that's all I wanted to mention. Check out some of the previous videos on Mars, possibly subscribe, possibly share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining your channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye. Hey, it has Mars in it.